Belgium, or officially the Kingdom of Belgium, is a state located in Western Europe. This country with a population of 10 million is important in Europe. The capital city of Brussels is located in the central Belgium region. Brussels is also home to the headquarters of the European communities and NATO. In this respect, it is one of the key countries in Europe. In this country, people are losing their spiritual identity day by day, affected by the degeneration of Western culture. However, the number of Belgians converting to Islam here is increasing day by day. According to a study by expert Jan Hertogen, 728,000 Muslims are living in Belgium today. According to the researcher, 400,000 of this Muslim population actively practice their faith. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, my name is uh, Osman. I am originally from Belgium. I'm uh, reversed. Um, and um, I used to live in the city of Antwerp. I was an accountant. I'm born in 1963. I'm uh, now 59 years old. Um, well, I study um, accountancy, economics in the University of Antwerp. And then I, uh, as I said, I, I started to work as a chartered accountant. Um, but as, um, I was fed up with this, always studying the newest laws and with the tax people. So I wanted to make trading. But I was still Christian. So before I was Christian, but not really practicing. Um, I just went to the common, the first common in the Holy Common when you're 12 years old. And I went to confess to the priest <laughs> my sins. <laughs> and he said, uh, make three our fathers, everything is forgiven. Jesus Christ died for your sins. Oh, okay, that's very nice. <laughs> he remembers the days when he would visit the church confession room after sinning. He says that the priest immediately forgave his sins. The priest would say that Jesus, peace be upon him, had already died to atone for all sins. Usman could not make sense of these superstitions. Baptized as a child, his faith in Christianity was now broken. When you're six years old in the Christian belief, you make the first common, so they put a hostie in your mouth and it's a special thing. And same when you're 12 years old, so they print cards and you wish each other a holy common like this. That's it. Uh, but you have to follow some lessons before, uh, which I did. My mother was insisting for this. Uh, my father was uh, secular. And um, when I was 13, I went to a secular school, so I lost. I wouldn't say lost, I, I left my Christianity. Um, and then I became... I wouldn't say secular, I, I was just not thinking about God, about religion. I was focused on dunya, um, making money, uh, having good position, uh, like most other people, and enjoy life. Good eating, good drinking, stuff. So this was my lifestyle. He no longer believes in Christianity. Because the Christianity that says Jesus, the Son of God, died half naked, surrounded by evildoers cursing him, was completely illogical to him. He could never believe in the lie that God had his own son killed to cover the sins of others. Well, actually, as a kid, I had a bit difficulties already to believe that God um, is uh, Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ is Son of God or Holy Spirit. I didn't believe in the Trinity. And actually, I had difficulties to believe that um, um, uh, Jesus Christ would be uh, crucified 
on the cross I had difficulties because I was already thinking at young age that uh, it's impossible that God will allow one of his biggest prophets to die on the cross, a shameful death, half naked, and people throw things to him and shouting words. I, f I think God would never allow this, to, especially not to one of his biggest prophets like Isa Lehusen, Musa Lehusen. He will not allow this. So I had difficulties with this. And also, um, yeah, you know, they collect money. Uh, it's okay, they can do, uh, but, you know, you're nearly forced to give money. Otherwise, you are not really accepted by the community. I find this all a bit uh, um, strange as a kid already. Indonesia, where he traded at the age of 32, would be a turning point on his path to Islam. During a business trip, he was badly scammed and lost all his money. But after receiving help from some local Muslims, he got to know about the religion of Islam. After embracing the faith, he then traveled to Syria to further his knowledge in Islamic studies. Until at the age of 32, I was uh, working as an uh, accountant and then I went for trading. I wanted to buy textile and shoes and everything in Indonesia. So I went to Indonesia and I wanted to make a joint venture, a company with an Indonesian local person. But this local person, he cheated me. I don't want to go in detail about this. But uh, I, was in a, I was very sad because actually my, my God that time was money. <laughs> and this was taken away. <laughs> so uh, Allah in his mercy, he, uh, he sent me to a saint who kept me with him for six months. So he gave me Quran in English, Hadith, uh, Fik, all of these things, stories about saints, about Sahabas. So I was very touched by this also because um, the religion of Islam was for the whole humanity, not only for uh, Jewish or uh, another. I was touched by this. So, oh, okay. Um, because I was not Jewish, I was Christian. So I say, okay, that's good. Um, I like this. And through his, uh, this person who kept me, his spiritual power, his connection with heavens, I, uh, my heart was more opened. And finally, um, he asked me, why you don't become Muslim? I say, why not? I give it a try. Astaghfirullah. Not really 100% convinced, but because he was asking, it was nearly impossible to say no. So I entered Islam, alhamdulillah. Uh, through this Indonesian uh, person and um, then I went to Damascus um, to study there a little bit uh, but then my father became ill he had heart attack he needed a bypass operation so I hurried to Belgium try to assist him much as much as I could so I had to break off my studies Osman has now turned a new page in his life. With the grace of Allah Almighty, he also took the path of guidance. He feels the excitement, enthusiasm and peace of faith on this path. He now studies exegesis of Quran and Hadith to learn about Islam. I said I, I study uh, the Quran a little bit. I study the Tafsir. But this uh, saint uh, in Indonesia, he had the right books. And um, also I study Hadith and stories. So I was um, uh, touched by personal experience also. I felt my, my um, thinking, my intention, my speaking, uh, my actions become cleaner yes through this saint in indonesia through his spiritual power again uh, i had more sincerity you know it's very important in islam to be humble and sincere so i, I felt this positive change in myself and i'm still trying to improve myself i'm far from my goal <laughs> uh, a brother had a dream uh, i can tell that 
we were climbing a very high mountain and uh, we were at the foot of the mountain and I asked the brother, uh, it is still far to reach our destination. He said, look, and the mountain was maybe still three kilometer high and on the top it was going like this. So you have to be an experienced mountain. So I'm just at the foot of the mountain hoping before I die or the last seven last breaths, I can become more um, sincere and humble. It is a common practice in the Western world to insult Islam, especially in the media. Osman was also affected by this situation at first, but now, as a person of faith, he experiences the happiness of worship and the love of God. I was believing uh, the Islamophobia too much. That's why after, even after six months training from the saint, I entered Islam because he was asking, because I feel his power. But uh, actually I, I believe what was in the news, it was that time already, in 95, uh, too strong against Islam. And um, that's why I have difficulties with accepting. We are trying to um, reach uh, a goal meaning it is living to please Allah Almighty, to please God. And uh, I think this is important. I believe uh, we haven't been created from apes. We don't believe in the Charles Darwin theory. So um, what I like is uh, the goal that you live to please Allah Almighty without expecting any reward uh, this life or next life. This is very important. So um, actually heaven and hell is a kind of um, it's in the Quran, the Holy Quran, for sure. It's for the majority of people, but it goes to please Allah Almighty and not expecting heaven or hell. Uh, so the only goal is, uh, is the, the reason of our creation is to uh, worship God. And uh, so, of course, when you pray, you feel the taste of worshiping. When you fast, you feel the taste of fasting. Yes. So um, I like this intention. And uh, we should be thankful because without uh, Allah Almighty's mercy, we would not be in existence. Everything has been created for the honor of Prophet Muhammad uh, So I think if you understand that, that's already a very big step. And um, of course we have ego, uh, what is it? Ego desires, uh, dunya and shaitan, our four big enemies. They are trying to prevent this. So it's a constant struggle against our own self, in, in particularly our own self, which is the most difficult to conquer. Uh, because of the nafs is under control, shaitan, desires and dunya have no, uh, no power, yes? So I like this principle uh, to fight the uh, evil of ourselves, in ourselves, which has been created with us, yes? And this is very important, I think, that um, you understand that and, you know, the big jihad is this, yes? The person who says he is a Muslim must prove his servitude through worship and submission. He must perform his prayers, fast Ramadan, and strive to improve his morals and perfect his faith. Osman, as a Muslim who has experienced the sweetness of faith, performs these devotions with great pleasure. He has very meaningful insights on the practices of prayers and fasting. It depends who is praying, who is praying as Imam, and uh, where you're praying. And um, sometimes Allah is giving a taste, sometimes not, it's up to Him. We pray because it's an order. We are not expecting any uh, big uh, thing coming from heavens. We picture in, we are very small in front of Allah Almighty. Uh, this is important, and the more humble you, you are, the more taste you have. Meaning, um, the prayer should uh, keep you from sins doing later, yes? It give you, should give you so much blessing uh, that uh, it's enough to uh, withstand. That's why we have to pray five times to be constantly remembering of Allah Almighty. Ramadan, of course, in the beginning it was difficult uh, because I, had, I was smoking also when I just entered Islam. So I had to fight uh, nicotine addiction. And so I stopped smoking. 
and then it was more easy, yes. But the ego always, uh, he object the most uh, against fasting. So still it is a bit difficult, especially in this heat. So I'm quite uh, inactive the time of Ramadan. I'm not working as I'm working normal in the garden. So I let someone else water the plants. In the, so I cannot be too much in the sun because I'm quickly drying up. So for me it's a bit difficult. Plus I'm pre-diabetic, uh, maybe diabetic now. So this makes it even more difficult, yes. But uh, this is a bodily problem. Uh, but uh, actually Ramadan, Allah Almighty make it easy. Yes, in His mercy. So it's much more easy than fasting Nafla or Sunnah another time. For me. Osman visited the Holy Land and other Muslim nations to spread Islamic teachings and practices outside of Belgium. Osman, who goes on these trips with his family, sees them as a pilgrimage rather than a holiday. He goes for the purpose of experiencing spirituality in these holy lands. The meaning of Hajj uh, is like um, you're obligatory to go, so it's one of the five pillars, we know that. Um, but the idea for Hajj is to become clean, so if you make your Hajj successfully, at least you do the obligatory, uh, like standing in Arafat, the day of Arafat is most important. And you're like a newborn baby, yes, this is how it should be. Um, so um, for this um, reason, I find it a bit uh, sad that um, now uh, too many uh, things are happening around uh, Mecca, Medina, the holy cities. We don't go in detail about this. But uh, a lot of things are being done that uh, the blessing of the Hajj is being uh, reduced in this time, but it doesn't matter. Uh, still, if you focus on the Kaaba and Prophet Muhammad Jerusalem, you should be okay, I think, yes. So, um, I had a, a few good experiences, um, especially in Arafat, it was very strong. Um, well, I can tell you a little bit about Arafat. I was able to make doas there for humanity and that people come to themselves, uh, not even for me, so they become human. Uh, this is very important in this time because... Uh, so I felt this doa was not for myself, it's like some force overtook me to ask this doa for mankind, uh, that people uh, become uh, good again and... Um, there are some good people, but now the world is focused on other things. Um, to save those people from uh, badness, that they keep on doing good. And I felt very enlightened and, you know, you know the usual thing. You feel electricity coming and some special goodness, um, open-minded, open-hearted. So I felt a lot of veils were removed in Arafat which unfortunately after the Hajj, uh, slowly coming back, <laughs> yes. Um, this was a very nice feeling, yes, and um, you can't uh, pay many money for it. It's a special, special mercy from Allah Almighty that uh, they opened this uh, for you there, for some people, not everyone got it. Others get other uh, revelations, other openings, and this was my opening. Osman, who learned the tenets and laws of Islam with great determination and enthusiasm after becoming a Muslim, applies what he learned about Islam to his life. Osman, who has learned as much as he can in Islamic studies, has the following recommendations for Muslims. So, um, Muslims, uh, a good advice for them is, there are many advices because they do many things wrong, unfortunately. Uh, they should go to mosque and ask Allah Almighty for help for solving their problem. Not only for themselves, but also for community. We don't like people uh, going on street, especially ladies, 
op proposing yourself and then they film it and they show Islam like a kind of beast. This is the worst they can do, the Muslims, especially in this time. And uh, we know there's many oppression, but uh, on the other hand, uh, Almighty is just so there's always a reason, although it's not always easy to find, but there's always, always a reason for um, uh, some kind of trouble coming to a certain nation or people. Yes, and um, I think we should uh, uh, take our eyes out and turn them so we can look to ourselves. Uh, this is the first step, uh, first individual and then for the community. And uh, if the forefathers did something wrong, um, we should not um, um, we should not do the same mistake. Yes, we should learn from it and understand uh, that is uh, maybe a price they have to pay this generation for what maybe many generations they have done blundered. They should understand they are in minority. They don't have any power in this world. So any any objection is uh, can be fatal. They should, uh, in this time, uh, just go to the mosque and pray for a solution. Clean their heart through remembrance of Allah Almighty, through zikr, and try to do good deeds and have good thoughts about everyone. Uh, that means you have, see, you have to see the barakat of Allah Almighty in every person who become Muslim. Like Manal Jardin Rumi, he was very uh, open for everyone. Yes, whether you're a Christian, Jewish, fire worshipper, welcome. Yes, even you're a big sinner, you can ask forgiveness and you come again and you make the same sin, you ask again forgiveness, we will give you again. So this is the principle of Islam. Allah is merciful, not like what they are showing now everywhere, unfortunately. But uh, like I said, we are a minority, uh, more serious, uh, they study more, and they are not violent people. They, they love humanity, they love all creation of Allah Almighty, which is very important. Thank you.